Welcome to Extraterrestrial Reality. Well, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, the former director of the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARRO, uh, is continuing with his magical mystery disinformation tour and uh, putting out, pumping out lies on podcasts and, 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 and telling people, mis, mis, providing misinformation, disinformation, uh, making things up about the Roswell crash, uh, towing the Air Force line about that. Uh, saying that it was all, all that was was uh, metallic balloons uh, that uh, the people got confused with, and that's all it was, and there's nothing to it. Um, so he's out there telling lies, and uh, basically the real conspiracy, according to Kirkpatrick, is that there's uh, been a cabal of uh, UFO believers, true believers out there, running around, bending the ears of people in Congress for decades now, uh, trying to get action on this uh, cover-up to try to uncover, the, the end the cover-up, and that's what the real conspiracy is. There is no government conspiracy to hide the truth about extraterrestrials, according to Kirkpatrick. He has found nothing. He has found nothing, according to Kirkpatrick. There's no such thing as aliens, according to him. And all this stuff is nonsense. And it's just uh, a, a few people out there who really believe it, who have been using their positions to uh, prod Congress uh, to do things to force disclosure. Uh, basically, that's the story. Uh, and it's basically a, the, that, basically what they're doing here, what he's doing here. This is projection. There is a conspiracy, and he's part of part of it now. Whether he knows it or not, I don't, I, again, we, I can't really say with with uh, a certainty what 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 his role is here. If he's just a useful idiot, uh, if he's uh, uh, one of the uh, people that knows everything and is uh, putting out lies, we just we're not sure here. I I, I don't know, uh, but. Uh, Based on the stuff he's saying here, I mean, obviously, he's, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, uh, but the real conspiracy here is, according to him, is that there's people out there that are pretending that there's uh, things being hidden by the government from the people uh, with regard to uh, non-human intelligences. That's the story. And as a lot of us know, that's an absolute lie. I know that for a fact because, of course, uh, I've had my own experiences. Uh, in addition to my, you know researching this, just like everybody else out there, I know that there's something going on. Uh, but uh, I think this is this could be a lot of people on uh, on the internet are are suspecting that uh, the reason for this is because they're concerned about the op-ed that David Grush, the whistleblower uh, and former Air Force official, plans on uh, publishing. Uh, pretty soon as far as we know it's supposed to be coming out here fairly soon and uh and this could be uh out of concern for that so they're trying to get the jump on it so they send out Kirk Patrick, who by the way is still acting as some kind of a consultant for arrow and uh so they got to get the word out there that there's this is all the real conspiracy is that there uh th there's people pretending that there's a conspiracy with regards to ufos that's the real conspiracy according to sean kirkpatrick uh, but we all know that that's a lie, just like we know that uh, another conspiracy that's been exposed uh, by Rob Heatherly of Military Witnesses to UAP. Uh, of course, as I was talking about yesterday, he showed up on the uh, Good Trouble show with Matt Ford, and it was an excellent podcast. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. It was very detailed. Uh, they went over all of the uh, issues that are ongoing on Wikipedia when it comes to the UFO subject, as well as people who are trying to push for disclosure. Uh, unfortunately, like uh, people like Ross Coltart, uh, George Knapp, uh, David, uh, David uh, Grush, uh, uh, people like that, are the, the, the people who are controlling the stories on what there's a, there's a cabal of editors. They actually call themselves a secret cabal of editors from this. Uh, apparently, a lot of them are from this organization called uh, Guerrilla Skepticism on Wikipedia. Uh, they have well over 100 people uh, working on this and, and they hold uh, they hold the uh, final say on what gets published on on certain wikipedia pages because they uh by majority rule it's a democratic process so that that's a big issue here because they're basically making people in the uf ufo community look like idiots um you know i've, I've talked about this uh, at length yesterday too uh, you know i mentioned you know talked about it for a while in my podcast yesterday on how uh there was different story uh, one of the stories i was looking at where the where these people have uh, these uh, guerrilla skeptics have their fingerprints all over it was with regard to that 1986 uh, japan airlines case where uh, uh saucers were uh, ufos were seen including a giant mothership ufo and uh, how that story 
uh, they made it sound like the, the, the witnesses to this were complete bozos and they didn't have any pertinent information in there like they should have. It was all removed uh, by this group of, uh, this cabal, the secret cabal, like they call themselves, of uh, debunkers. And uh, I asked the question uh, on my Spotify uh, uh, in my in my Spotify poll yesterday, I asked the question on this, and uh, the question was, uh, does Wikipedia need to alter its policies to prevent debunker cabals from controlling the new UFO narrative on its website? And so far, there's been 52 votes. Uh, 10 people, or 19.2%, say no, while 42 people, or 80.8%, say yes. And I, I don't know what to say about this one. I, I, I might have to go with the nose on this one, and I'll tell you why. I'll explain it. I actually received a comment from one of my followers on Spotify, Shep, uh, and he writes, a Wikipedia is a well-known open source project. People should just understand the basic concept of how Wiki works and be educated to that instead of trying to change how Wiki works. And uh, I think uh, Shep is probably right about this. I mean, what we're probably going to have to do, we can't get Wikipedia to change its policies. How could we do, I mean, what, how could you possibly do that? I mean, you, basically what you have is this group of editors that have joined forces and uh, basically they uh, have the final say on some of these Wikipedia pages because they have more numbers. So people in the UFO community are going to have to get together and form their own secret cabal and, and start uh, uh, rewriting some of these Wikipedia articles and, and bump these skeptics off out of there. Uh, so that's probably going to be the answer for that. I don't see what else we could possibly be done uh, because... Uh, unfortunately, this is the way it is. Like uh, the, the way it's set up right now, you, if, if somebody, for instance, on Ross Coltart's page, on, on a page on Wikipedia about him, they make, they've make they removed a lot of inf the good information about him and they replaced it in, uh, with other word, the, the way the wording is, they arrange it to and make it sound like he's basically a clown. Uh, but if you were, if I were to go in there and try to edit that, uh, I would be overruled by this majority of other uh, people who are from this guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia organization. Uh, so I would be overruled, and my, my my additions or subtractions to that article would be would be mooted in the end. That's basically how it's set up. So with that in mind, what's going to have to happen here is there go, there's going to have to be people who are uh, on the other side of this equation are going to have to get together and form their own sort of organization, their own cabal to to fight against this, to have their own group of people to outnumber the ones the skeptics, these debunkers that are controlling the narrative on Wikipedia. Uh, as Matt Ford said on the show last night, and Wikipedia is like the number seven site on the whole internet where people go to for information. So right now, for the most part, uh, when it comes to these UFO topics, it's, it's treated like fringe and, and pseudoscience and knuckleheads and idiots and morons. That's what they try to make the UFO community look like because it's being controlled by this group of, of debunkers who don't like this idea of the extraterrestrial presence and they think it's all nonsense. When I know that they're wrong, because obviously I've seen them with my own eyes, so I know that they're wrong, right? So... Uh, uh, we have to do something about this. I don't know how we're going to do it. It's going to probably take money. Uh, that's another question. You have to wonder, where's all this money coming from for these uh, editors to, to be doing this work? I mean, there's a lot of work. You see a, this, a lot of the same names on Wikipedia on a lot of these articles who are the ones making the editorial changes. Uh, it's the same names over and over again. It, it would take a lot. It takes a long time. It's a lot of work. You got to have. You're going to make changes to something to an article like that, and then have all the sources listed. I mean, it's not something that's you could do in five sec, five minutes. It's, it takes time. There's a lot of work involved here. So obviously, some, these people are getting paid to do this, right? These this, this debunker cabal. So obviously, we're going to have to get our own cabal. On the the UFO community is going to need its own UFO cabal. Uh, because we're they're, they're going to hit us left and right with disinformation and misinformation. They want this bottled up. You have here's what we have. Here's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with these idiotic debunkers who just don't want to accept this. They want to just uh, keep the status quo. They don't like the idea of extraterrestrial visitation or slash non-human uh, intelligence. Uh, they don't like that, and so they want to pretend that it's not real and that anybody who believes that is stupid and idiotic. Uh, but that's their problem. I can't help it. I mean, if they don't want to accept reality, they could go join the flat earthers and hang out with them or you know, whatever they want to do. Uh, but uh, so you have them and then you have the, the secret control group that is controlling this, which is obviously uh, some 
uh, faction within the Pentagon. Some there are certain people within the Pentagon who are part of this, as well as some uh, defense contractors. Or you know, that's what it's looking like that they're the ones that are, want this to be kept secret. As we all know, uh, that UAP Disclosure Act was uh, gutted last year because uh, members of the, the, the military industrial complex got the puppets that they have uh, control of in the House, like Mike Turner and Mike Rogers. Uh, to gut it uh, because they didn't want they're afraid of it if there was nothing to this right then they should have would allow it to pass right but there there is something to it but that's why they they gutted it because they don't want anyone to know the truth about this reality uh and then meanwhile like i said earlier we got uh uh sean kirkpatrick running around and telling lies uh basically he was on a a podcast uh yesterday in in the room with peter bergen uh, and he says, uh, Kirkpatrick says, there's no evidence of aliens. Now, as we know, uh, apparently there were some people who did contact Arrow, and but Sean Kirkpatrick denies this. There were some whistleblowers who contacted Arrow. Uh, Kirkpatrick says that didn't happen. Uh, somebody's lying. Right? I think it was probably Kirkpatrick, right? That's just my feeling. I don't, I don't trust this guy at all. Uh, and also... Well, well, I mean, basically, he said he looked into this and he found nothing. There was nothing there. He found no evidence whatsoever. So what was the the extent of his investigation? So so somebody tells him, OK, yeah, uh, uh, Northrop Grumman has uh, a, an object, uh, a UFO that was recovered, it was an alien craft that was recovered uh, 12 years ago. This is just an example. Uh, they, they recovered it 12 years ago, and they have it at this location. So what, what, what's the extent of Kirkpatrick's investigation? Did he go to the site and ask them to go to look at, at that exact location where, where he was told that this object was located? Or did he just call up? Apparently what he did was he just called people up and just said, hey, uh, this is uh, Kirk, Dr. Kirkpatrick with Arrow. Uh, I heard from some whistleblower last week that uh, you guys are keeping uh, some alien craft on the premises in uh, one of your facilities in uh, Florida or wherever, right? Uh, is that true? And then they, they, then the answer is, oh, no, no, that's not true. I, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. I thought it was a bunch of nonsense. Okay, thanks a lot for your help. I'll talk to you later. I think that's the extent of Kirkpatrick's investigation. I think this guy's a complete, absolute clown. And he's a liar, and he's putting out disinformation and misinformation. He's part of this uh, uh, cover-up. That's what he's become. That's what it's, it's pretty clear at this point. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's, uh, there was an article here in USA Today that covered some of this stuff, and I, I want to go through this. Uh, I'm going to skip through it until I get to the, to the meat of it. It says, what Kirk pa here's a, a sub-headline. It says, what Kirkpatrick learned about Roswell conspiracy theories. Uh, and it says here, the Roswell story began in 1947 when the United States military first put out a report saying it captured a flying saucer near the Roswell Army Airfield in New Mexico. Though it later retracted the claim and put out the new official story that it was a weather balloon, the damage was done. To this day, conspiratorial thinkers believe the alien bodies, that alien bodies were covered amid that wreckage. Yeah, we had, let me just stop there. We've had multiple witnesses, multiple witnesses, a lot of them making deathbed confessions about alien bodies and the uh, crashed UFO, making deathbed confessions about this. I, I've, I've just talked about this. I've talked about it all the time. It doesn't seem like uh, uh, no one in the mainstream media seems to care about the all the witnesses uh, who are on the pro uh, extraterrestrial craft crash and alien body side of this. There's not enough of those, but they, all, they always go back to this stupid balloon story. Uh, and the uh, crash test dummies uh, which, that the Air Force tried to say uh, is what happened, which is nonsense, total, absolute nonsense. Anyway, it says here, uh, but Kirkpatrick chucks all the UFO hoopla up to a top secret government program not to reverse engineer alien ships, but to manufacture high altitude metallic spy balloons. In his estimation, recovery operations to retrieve those down balloons, as well as a very, very real, uh, very real, very fatal military plane crash at the time, combined to perpetuate the UFO myth. Uh, he said, and here's a direct quote, everybody's still raw from the war and there's a lot of technological issues that people are trying to wrap their minds around, Kirkpatrick said, and that affected a lot of what people saw and how they reported. I think the same thing is true today. This is absolute, abs absolute gaslighting. That's what this is. <laughs> absolute, pure, 
un unadulterated gaslighting. That's what this is. To say that what those people uh, saw out in uh, Roswell was uh, metallic balloons. That's what people were seeing back in 1947. That's what uh, I guess Kenneth, Kenneth Arnold saw flying over Mount Rainier in Washington State uh, in June of 1947. I guess that's what he saw was just metallic balloons were flying in formation. At, at incredible speeds. That's what they, I guess that's what he saw. I guess that's what uh, uh, fighter jets were chasing after over Washington in 1952, the, the UFOs that were flying over the Capitol in the White House. That's what they was, I guess, according to Sean Kirkpatrick. Uh, and that this, and that what the people saw in Roswell was just metallic balloons and they got confused, which is absolutely absurd. Anybody who would do the research on this would know that what he's saying here is absolute hogwash and, and, and misinformation and not true. Then the, then the article goes on. It says, Kirkpatrick denies that the United States government has found extraterrestrials. At one point in the interview, Bergen cut straight to the chase, inviting Kirkpatrick, uh, if you found evidence of extraterrestrials, to exclusively tell us on this podcast, but no dice. The best thing, here's a direct quote from Kirkpatrick. The best thing that could have happened in this job is I found the aliens and I could have rolled them out, but there's none. There is no evidence, evidence of aliens and there's no evidence of the government cons conspiracy. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Right to the public's faces, a top official from the United States government who was working in this Arrow UFO office is coming out and, and, and trying to sell this to the American public. This is absolute lies. This guy is a liar. Sean Kirkpatrick, you're a liar. That's what you are. You're an absolute liar. That's what you are. Uh, and, and the consp real conspiracy here is that you're, be you're part of this conspiracy now. You're helping them cover this up. You're helping them try to put the toothpaste back in the tube, but it's not going to work. There's too, mu too many people out there that are onto you clowns. Uh, here, it continues here. It says, rather, Kirkpatrick contended that the objects many witnesses mistake for extraterrestrial UFOs are actually new classified technology being tested in our skies or even aircraft from rival nations being used to spy on the United States. Remember the Chinese spy balloon episode? Again, this is nonsense, absolute nonsense. What about all the landing case, uh, uh, landing cases, and the physical trace evidence left behind by those cases? In, in some of those cases, what about that? What about all the videos, all the pictures, everything, all the witness testimony from all these decades? Everybody's a liar. They're, they didn't see extraterrestrials. None of these people who claimed they were abducted were abducted, according to this guy. He's making it all up. It's all nonsense. The government is lying to you. And this, and right now they're using Kirkpatrick as a mouthpiece. He's doing a different job now this is what it is and as far as i'm concerned the you know the, what they're trying to do is they're they're, they're concerned about david grush's op-ed that's going to be coming out so they're sending kirk patrick out now to do this kind of clownish activity uh, uh to, to try to mislead people that's what this is all about Anyway, Kirkpatrick goes on. Some of them could even be civilian drones, all of which Kirkpatrick concedes are national security concerns. What is more likely that an adversary has come up with a new technology or we have extraterrestrials? Uh, that's what he says. Now, let me just stop here for a second. I'm going to talk about the incident that I had in 1994. The object that I and somebody else, my friend, saw in 1994 during a fishing trip, there's absolutely no way that this could have been made by humankind. There's no way. It, this thing was as big as a house. It was hovering only uh, two and a half stories off the ground. It was. I was within uh, 20 feet of this thing. And I, it was right in front of me. It had three giant lights on it and, and it and made absolutely no sound. My buddy was underneath it, under the edge, shining a flashlight on the bottom of this thing. It was incredible, but there's absolutely no way that this could have been made by mankind. It, it was incredible. But, and this guy's trying to tell us all that, that all these things that people are seeing over the years is just drones and, and stuff like that, or maybe enemy stuff that's coming into our country. If it was enemy stuff, you would be, uh, it would be like, it would be World War III. There's no way that China or Russia is going to be sending stuff deep into the heart of America in 1994 uh, that objects like this, in the middle of nowhere, for one thing, and this, where I was, where we were fishing at was in the middle of nowhere. There was nobody there, right, at this pond off this lake in the middle of nowhere near Hazleton, Pennsylvania. There was nobody else there, right? Why would the Russia be checking out some pond in the middle of nowhere in, 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 uh, in the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania. Why would that be? It's ridiculous. Absolutely absurd. And then th that's just my experience. But you look at all, the, all the, the different reports from different people over the decades, from the military, civilians, whoever. There's all kinds of uh, people that have encountered these things. But yet we have people in the government like Kirkpatrick, who right now is still serving as a consultant to Arrow, going out on these different podcasts and spewing this, these lies. That's what he's doing. This guy's an incredible liar. Don't trust the word he says. 
Anyway, here he, the article continues. It says, uh, the denial is at odds with testimony provided in July by former Pentagon intelligence official David Grush, who testified about an alleged shadowy multi-decade Pentagon program to retrieve and study not only downed spacecraft, but extraterrestrial pilots. Grush accused the government under oath of being aware of extraterrestrial activity since the 1930s and hiding the program from Congress while misappropriating funds to operate it. Kirkpatrick took a swipe at Grush in the interview, labeling him as being among a small group of individuals within the military apparatus who have become, quote, true believers, end quote, determined to involve the government in, into investigating aliens. Uh, here's a direct quote from Kirkpat Kirkpatrick. He says there, this core group of people have influenced him, have told him this information. He may have misinterpreted things that people have said, or he may have just fallen to the influence of what these folks have been telling him. Dismissing Rush and others' claims as window dressing, Kirkpatrick reiterated his stance that such rumors have circulated despite the lack of any evidence supporting the claims. However, even Grush acknowledged during his testimony that laws regarding classified information constrained him from presenting hard evidence of a crash retrieval program. But what does Kirkpatrick say? He says the office's mission is not to prove the existence of extraterrestrials. The office's mission is to minimize technical and intelligence surprise. Okay, so it's not even about looking for extraterrestrials. That's what he's saying. It's just about looking for, trying to figure out what these UAP are and, and that's it and moving on with life and forget about it. Uh, anyway, uh, now there were some things, uh, on a lot of people are talking about this on Twitter. Of course, one of the people I talk about a lot is Joe Mergia, the UFO Joe. Um, and uh, he said, he was putting out another, he, he put out some comments uh, on his, uh, on some of his tweets in the last couple of days uh, about what Kirkpatrick has been saying. Uh, and during that interview, this uh, Bergen says, Kirkpatrick makes it pretty clear that his office thinks that the truth behind that small unexplained percentage will most likely be found right here on earth. And then Kirkpatrick, we said, Occam's razor is a valid, valid axiom. If you are faced with a set of data and it may fit two different theoretical hypothetical explanations, the one that's most more simple is usually the right one. What is more likely that an adversary has come, with, uh, come up with a new technology or we have extraterrestrials? I, 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 what does it matter? I mean, when you what, sometimes it could be some adversary technology, but there are times, like in, in my experience, when you, when there's some kind of a little creature running around your bedroom when you're a kid and it only has three digits on its hands and it's most decidedly not human, right? Then you have to come up with, well, it, the most simple answer is this thing is an extraterrestrial from some other planet. That's what it is. It's not, it's not a human being. That's the simple answer. Uh, anyway, uh, Mergia says... Uh, his response to this was, how about this, Sean? Let us all, let us see all of the classified, classified data, data, and then we can decide which is more likely. Deal? In my opinion, it's a mix of black tech and something more exotic. And that's exactly where I'm at with this, too. Uh, it is a mixture. I, I think that sometimes uh, some of these objects are, uh, will have a, a prosaic explanation a lot of times. I would probably say most times a, a lot of UFOs will have that uh, prosaic explanation, but there's no question there is absolutely no question that sometimes they do not. And they are, they, the, the explanation is more exotic than we could possibly imagine. Uh, there's just no question about it. Uh, anyway, you know, Lou Elizondo also put out a statement. Uh, uh, I just want to get into this before I forget about it. He, he put out a statement about what's going on right now uh, and with all of this stuff, and, and particularly with what's going on with this Wikipedia cabal of uh, skeptics uh, controlling certain pages on Wikipedia. And I wanted to uh, make a statement. He, I wanted to uh, share his statement. Here's what as Elizondo said. He says, This is more than just an attempt to disparage a few of us working toward disclosure. In fact, it's an assault on the very freedoms of every person who looks to reliable sources for information. When the outlets designed to inform and clarify information become corrupted by a few reckless, agenda-driven zealots, it becomes downright dangerous for all our freedoms and casts doubts or excuse me, cast doubt on all forms of media and freedom of the press. We must do a better job at policing ourselves of these types of characters. Remember, there is no greater evil than that which wears the mask of virtue. Yeah, I just want to point that out because that's very important. I mean, to me, right, what we're seeing here, not only are we having this uh, assault on, on reality by people like Kirkpatrick, and now we learn uh, from Rob Heatherly uh, that uh, we have this assault on... Uh, 
on on information on 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 trusted outlets like wikipedia i'm a big wikipedia fan i couldn't understand what was going on uh every time i looked at a lot of different articles on there with regard to ufos it looked like uh it was they were penned by people who are who have a debunk, debunking skeptical mind that's all fine but what you have to do here uh with those they need to be even those stories need to be 50-50. You need to have both sides of the story. You just can't have these one-sided uh, skeptical uh, uh, positions, and that's it. you got to have two sides of the story. It's okay to, if you have uh, some debunkers who don't believe this or, and, and, and they're uh, scientists and they have the certain things to say about UFOs and, and they don't believe in it, okay, that's fine. You can have that information. But you have to have the other scientists in there that do believe in it. you got, you got to provide two sides of the story. That's what you got to have. you got to have both sides of the story and let people people make up their minds the way it's set up right now how could anybody make up their minds and then meanwhile you have uh, sean kirkpatrick running around on this uh, magical mystery disinformation tour uh just telling people lies about this just making stuff up showing how how much of a bad job this guy did no wonder he quit he was he sucked kirkpatrick sucked in this job he stunk he stunk uh anyway there was uh, a user on reddit uh, Backlow6488 uh, actually put out a post, and I want to share this, uh, and it was entitled, This is What Debunkers Actually Believe. It says here, I have read these debunker conspiracy theories before, but to see Kirkpatrick spouting them publicly has been quite a shock. From what I have gathered by reviewing debunker positions, these are the conclusions I have arrived at. Debunkers believe that a small cabal of individuals going back to the 80s or 90s have systematically swindled members of Congress, the military, and the intelligence community successfully for decades in order to extract funding by getting them to believe in NHI slash UFOs are real. Uh, and then he goes on to say that they would likely need to falsify evidence and tell some big lies to convince all these folks to the degree that it appears they have, in my opinion. Uh, there are likely 40 plus government officials involved, some with very high levels, uh, very high level, according to reporting. But exactly what, what this person's saying here uh, is true, is that they would have had to convince everybody in Congress on both sides of the aisle of this uh, uh, with, by incredi with incredibly big lies about this. There just obviously there are people in Congress have learned some things behind the scenes that the public doesn't know about yet or they wouldn't be doing this. Let's be clear. Let's be clear about this. There is absolutely no way you would see top two top senators, a Democrat and a Republican, Rounds and, and Schumer, putting forth that UAP Disclosure Act and trying to get it passed, trying to make it part of the National Defense Authorization Act for 2024. They would not have done that if they did not believe that something was going on and they were not and they weren't fooled. These people aren't stupid. They, they there's no way that they could have been fooled into this by just people bending their ear. They were they learned stuff in these uh, secure. Uh, facilities meeting with some of these whistleblowers that's why they're doing this they know they know things Kirkpatrick knows this too obviously this guy I, I can't imagine that he doesn't know it at this point after hearing the stuff that he was saying on Bergen show you he has to again the conspiracy we're all seeing the real conspiracy here the real conspiracy y y y we actually know now there's actually a secret cabal of editors of debunkers uh manipulating different stories about ufos and the people involved in disclosure efforts on wikipedia that's what they're doing they're controlling the narrative it's a con it, and it's a conspiracy rob heatherly by the way who's going to uh i i was in communication with him today and he uh, he's hopefully going to be on one of my sh uh, podcasts before the end of the week we're going to talk about this even further uh I mean, he's uncovered this. He showed he showed you what's going on. There is a conspiracy. It's obvious. And so you have that conspiracy. We have Kirkpatrick running around making these kind of asinine statements. They're obviously lies. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. He, either that or he does know what he's doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. That's what I think. I think he's just lying to us. Anyway, this uh, writer also says this, the, uh, another thing uh, that debunkers uh, believe, the conspiracy now reaches the highest levels of the intelligence and, sec and security committees, leading to hearings both public and secret, bombshell legislation put forth by the Senate Majority Leader and supported by the White House, as well as other UAP legislation, and whistleblower legal, legal proceedings directly supported by both the current and former inspector, uh, in in intelligence community inspector gen general. So yeah, 
That's what he's. That's what they're trying to say. That they're claiming this is what they're saying now. The, the debunkers and Kirkpatrick, right, are trying to basically make paint this as the biggest conspiracy here. People like the creepy Stephen Greenstreet from the New York Post, right? All these debunkers, they're out there trying to paint this as the real conspiracy is people like Christopher Mellon and Lou Elizondo, uh, uh, J Jeremy Corbell, uh, George Knapp, uh, Ross Coulthard. They're the ones that are pushing this narrative. They're the conspiracists. Right, they're the ones, and they're, they're the real conspiracy, right? And they're trying to push people in Congress to to pass all this legislation when there's really nothing there. They made it all up. That's what they're trying to say, which is absolutely no, it's absolute nonsense. And then uh, another thing that he says here that the uh, debunkers apparently believe the level of sophistication and malice on the part of the swindlers, according to this conspiracy theory, would be absolutely astounding. It would be one of the biggest scandals in the history of the Pentagon. It would reveal that a bizarre and outlandish mind virus is capable of spreading throughout the highest levels of our government and would likely justify mental health and competency evaluations of all parties involved, involved both the swindlers and the swindled, ultimately bringing into question each and every person's ability to hold office or their respective position. I think this was a great uh, post by uh, Backlow6488. Uh, yeah. That's what it is. That's what they're basically trying to tell us. They're trying to tell us that that's what they think. Uh, the, the, the real conspiracy here is all these people pushing people in Congress uh, to to look into this, to pass legislation, to to, to try to end this cover up. That that's the real conspiracy because there's nothing to it. They're just making it all up. Then again, explain to me, please, someone explain to me real. You're gonna have to explain it to me real slowly, right? And real succinctly, right? You're gonna have to explain to me why did the military industrial complex, why did the, the donors to people like Mike Turner and Mike Rogers have them gut that UAP uh, uh, legislation? Why did they do that? Why did they want to have why couldn't they why were they afraid of that if there's nothing if they're not, if they're not hiding anything then they shouldn't have been afraid but they were afraid and they did end it they gutted that legislation that uap disclosure act they ended it they ended it we got nothing we we really didn't get any good change with any legislation out of that it would a bill there was something that was passed but it was really had no teeth in it so somebody needs to really come up with a really good explanation for that on the other side because it's just not making any sense to me. Why did that end? Why did all these people, other people in Congress, think that that, that uh, amendment was, was, was needed? And, and, but yet a couple of people in, in Congress, uh, in, in the House, who uh, held the chairs, uh, the, the, like the chairs of these certain committees, did what they needed to do to make sure that uh, that bill was gutted. Why did that? Why did that happen? But yet all these other people thought it was necessary uh, in order for disclosure, uh, for the efforts to disclose the truth about this. Why did they? What? Why? Why was it necessary to gut that uh, act? Why was it? Because, I'll tell you why. Because it would have ended this. It would have most certainly helped lead us to the end of this. Right, it would have helped. It would have caused them problems. The people that are keeping this secret. That's what it would have done. Anyway, uh, I just want to say uh, I want to thank you all for joining me today. And until next time.